Hello team and welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself Jonathan M. Ed Spears. So I don't know what type of video this is in my usual kind of uh, organization of, of topics and whatnot. This is, I guess, a corrective of a video I did yesterday, or at least, yeah, let's flesh out what actually seems to have happened uh, and just correct some of my own uh, assumptions. So I did a video saying tank attack is this heroism or suicidal insanity? And loads of you commented with your expertise uh, and your opinions about what actually took place. And I just want to say, awesome. Thank you very much for that. That's, that's why I love you guys. Uh, good stuff. So let's just quickly show you the video again. Uh, if you've already seen this and know what I'm going to say, hey, you don't have to watch this. But this is just me going through what happened and, I guess, uh, correcting myself. So uh, I was saying this appears to be nuts or it's great heroism, and there's a fine line between heroism and insanity. Uh, and this appears to be to be driving along that fine line. So this is a tank. First of all, it's pulling something, uh, and it's still, you know, not 100% sure about what that is. Some people claiming that you can see there's a, a line out there, and then there's some dust being kicked off there. Some people claiming that that would be to trigger mines, right? So, but then it would be trying to trigger mines over an area it's already driven, unless it's it's like a wide uh, scraper there, then I'm still not quite sure that that would trigger mines. I think you're more likely that the tank itself is going to trigger the mine, but hey, there you go. Uh, unless it pulls in the middle of where it's driving. So you've got the two tank tracks uh, and it's going to, it, it's some kind of, it's enough weight or enough disturbance to, to, if the tank tracks miss a mine, then it then it explodes a mine that would be in between. I don't know. It could be that. But not really sure. Anyway, you've got this tank on its own. Yes, there's another tank, but that, that disappears. It's not part of the rest of the video. This tank is on its own, and it's absolutely leathering it. And it's leathering it through uh, land that it doesn't know. Well, it, you would assume it's heavily mined, because everywhere it appears to be heavily mined. But this isn't. This is a Urijani. And this tank on its own is is charging in and firing it, its uh, its turret, it's firing tank rounds at Urajini. I don't know if, the, it, if it's aiming at anything particular or whether it's just uh, just firing at, you know, I don't know if it's particularly stabilized either. It, it's firing at the, the town. Uh, and then it starts getting peppered with sort of mortar rounds and some kind of high explosive artillery round or something so the mortars are going off in different places and then you've got yeah a mortar and then a big old explosion there so it's fired off at that town and then it does basically does a yui and drives off back uh and then i this is where i made a particularly incorrect claim but it's based more on my poor eyesight than anything else so actually i thought that tank was being uh, there was an explosion just behind the tank but there was an explosion behind the tank. It has its turret facing backwards. And as it's driving away, it is firing. Although it just seems to have fired directly into uh, the ground behind it. But I, I thought that this grey puff next to it was a mortar. But actually, you can see the, the smoke coming out of the muzzle. That, that was the tank firing backwards. Just not a very good shot. And then it's absolutely careening through uh, like the undergrowth. Again, it fires into... I don't know. Let's have a look at that. Another shot. Yeah, and then something else hits over there, but it's that's not the trajectory of that. That that round goes into the ground, so I don't think it's firing backwards is doing a particularly good job. But n nonetheless, uh, you know there are mortars going off uh, here and there, um, but nowhere near the tank at the moment. Oh, there's another tank. That's the uh, that, so it's the other tank that was behind it. So there was another tank, uh, and this tank here was driving with its turret facing backwards and just firing off, uh, but not doing a particularly good job of hitting anything particular. Anyway, I was saying, what the hell is the point of that? That is nuts that on its own, that would drive around and do that. And then lots of you guys gave your opinion. But actually, underneath this particular tweet, interestingly, this, this opinion from this military guy who's fought in a tank dis disagrees with an opinion in my threads about someone who's fought in a tank. But anyway, this guy says, don't get me wrong here, but as a 17-year NATO Army vet in a Leopard 2A4 tank, as a Leopard 2A4 tank commander, I really still don't understand why a Ukrainian tank does this alone. It's nearly suicide. We always said one tank is not a tank, and yet I see this so many times. 
So in other words, don't use tanks individually on their own. And that's kind of where I was going with my conversation, but lots of you disagreed with me and him. Uh, someone said, it's a bit nuts, but there's one thing I wonder about. It's a way of getting counter battery onto targets without risking infantry. Guess you could try with softer vehicles, but you wouldn't get as much protection. And then this guy says back, to begin with, Russian junk doesn't give you any protection at all. Never, nada, nothing. But no, a tank should never operate alone, period. Uh, and this guy then says back, if you cop a direct hit, run over a mine or eat an ATGM, then yes, you're right, you're toast. But given that they don't have much in terms of air support, fully sending it will give you some protection against near misses from artillery like the video shows. It's a bit callous, but... Um, I also think, you know, three crew versus how many possible infantry uh, you lose if you don't counter the artillery. Anyway, that's the way I see it. So, uh, and that's kind of the argument. And what people are saying beneath mine is like, um, it's kind of like wild weasel. So the wild weasel for the Air, air Force was a way of, is a, is a way of sending in uh, an airplane to trigger the air defense system. So another airplane can hit it with uh, harm, uh, missiles or, or take out the the air defenses themselves and hopefully you've got enough stuff to get away from being hit by the air, air, air defenses yourself so but you know that's a that's a risky thing to do isn't it uh here you have someone saying that uh strangely my work colleague who was a mech mechanized infantry with the baor british army on the rhine in the 70s talks about this tactic basically a contingent of mech inf would be sent towards a village during war games, of course, so as spotters could work out strong points, artillery, mortar positions, to then bring in effective fire on positions of the enemy. This is an example of the same the strategy. Absolutely. Um, uh, and and this is, you know, what appears to be happening. Uh, as someone says here, we call this a thunder run. Uh, it scares the heck out of enemy infantry, reveals unknown enemy positions, inflicts damage on known targets, and allows friendly counter-battery fire to target. Uh, there was much intelligence gained from this run, and in hindsight, well worth, worth the risks. So here we have another tank commander in my threads. I mean, this is absolutely great. Uh, my thoughts as an ex-tanks commander is that the only way I would risk my tank and crew is the following. So this is from um, Mike Delta. Uh, assisting with units that need to be provided with, air support, air, air, with fire support. Secondly, providing a feint or other operations. You're right that they took a large risk. If I was their op officer commanding, I would sack the tank commander if they just took the tank for a jolly. I don't believe that you would have inexperienced tank commanders at this stage in the war. Also, throwing in an inex inexperienced tank commander is crazy, even with the current shortages of tanks and crew. Either way, it would be interesting to know. Thanks for the great coverage, yeah, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you for that. Um, but yeah, so, so people saying it basically a weasel run, um and uh, so on and so forth I, I just want to talk about the uh the thunder run here so the thunder run it comes from the battle of baghdad as far as i can work out so on april the 5th task Force one to 64 armor of the u.s army's third infantry battalion second brigade executed a raid later called the thunder run to test remaining iraqi defenses the operation began south of baghdad and went through main roads to the newly secured airport Iraqi resistance was disorganized and the unit sustained few casualties. The unit was forced to abandon one tank due to recoilless rifle or RPG strike in the rear that penetrated a fuel cell and set the engine on fire. The crew was unharmed. Later, the Air Force bombed the tank to destroy it in place and the Iraqi Information Ministry claimed credit for destroy destroying it. Two days later, the entire 2nd Brigade of the 3rd Infantry division was ordered to conduct another thunder run following the same route as before this route had been fortified in the intervening period the senior leaders feared much more substantial resistance than during the prior encounter colonel david perkins the brigade's commander followed the original thunder run route north into baghdad but then veered east into the government districts instead of west towards the airport the second brigade easily took control of what is now the green zone in one day dramatically speeding up the time uh, the end of conventional ground combat in Iraq. Um, and it's described in a book called Thunder Run, the armored strike to capture Baghdad. So basically, it, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a form of uh, getting info uh, and drawing out uh, Russian attack, or Iraqi in that case, but Russian attacks such that you can do your counter-battery fire. Uh, and, and it appears to be the case there. So I, that, I would say that that is almost certainly what was happening um, and but it's interesting that different tank 
uh, commanders or people with, with different expertise will disagree. Like one saying, I, this is nuts, I wouldn't do it, I would never send my tank in there, as we saw in the Twitter thread. And then other, others here saying, no, that, that, that's, you know, kind of accepted uh, tactic. So, uh, yeah, each to their own, right? But, but I, I think that it appears that this tank was, was doing that. I mean, there's no way it was going out on a jolly, right? So there would be some kind of objective there uh, but but yes i think it's drawing out enemy fire but i'm still wondering if anyone has more thoughts about what that thing it is that it is trailing behind it uh, i would like to know i mean would that seriously have enough weight to trigger mines because any other kind of trigger mines uh, you could get a magnetic mine but then you know that would be triggered by the tank going over it so i, I, I struggle to think that that trailing something that doesn't seem to have huge weight behind it is is not yeah is not going to achieve much so unless it's just accidentally something that's that's hanging off the back of it and it's not actually intended for anything i i don't know but anyway i i correct myself thank you so much for giving your expertise and in fact the whole thread is interesting uh, and well worth looking into but i would say yeah it's 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 definitely kind of draw oh no, i said definitely um it seems to me that it's trying to draw out the Russian defences so they can know where to strike. And as you see, you've got drone, at least a drone in the air. Uh, these days, you know, you're certain of having more than one drone, uh, getting a sense of what is going on in, in that town so that they can then hit hit places in this town. But also, you know, those mortars and artillery fire won't be coming from the town, but the idea is it'll be tracked uh, by counter battery sort of radar um you would assume that 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 would be close by in order to to work that out anyway let me know if you think my my second bite of the apple is is closer to the truth uh thanks so much for watching just a quick one uh, a corrective take care speak soon